Hello and welcome to Management Principles. This is Professor Steve Greathouse. All right, if you'll bear with me, we'll walk through the basics of the course and kind of what to expect during the five weeks of this short summer session. And I'll tell you a little bit about how to be successful in the course. All right, so let's jump in. Steve Greathouse, I'm a retired military guy. Uh, quite a bit of experience in the military and in the professional world. Uh, bachelor's degree uh, from Lubbock Christian University and a master's in management from Texas A&M. I've worked a variety of positions, uh, like I say, in the military and in the private sector. Um, I would say that my core competencies are really in general business, leadership, management, strategic planning, process improvement, uh, performance management, uh, organizational behavior, and a little bit of marketing and sales. All right, uh, so I'm from Texas, married to my best friend. She's also a college professor. She's at Baylor University. Uh, I used to teach over there. Uh, and just so you know, so this is an online course so you won't get to benefit from uh, or be punished by some of my sarcastic sense of humor. Um, but I do give people a hard time, so expect that if you do interact with me over the phone or via email. Um, that's who I am. That's what I look like. All right. So my teaching philosophy. So I, I really want to create business leaders. I, I, I realize that you guys, the students, are looking to, you know, check this uh, block, get an A in the class, and that's awesome. But you know, I'm hoping that you'll actually learn something too that you can apply in, uh, to your career. And I'm sure you want that as well. All right, so I really wanna be more of a facilitator. You and I will learn together, okay? So I'll provide the tools and the system, the process. You need to follow it and I'll help you get there best I can, all right? So some of the things I want you to be, I want you to be professional. That means get your work done on time, uh, do work without, uh, being asked, um, find an, try to find the answers yourself before you ask somebody else or myself. Uh, I want you to think critically. That means question things. Don't just take things for granted. If you have a question about how something uh, applies to the real world, just ask. Be happy to happy to talk about it with you. Um, I want you to think about becoming a servant leader. That is, becoming successful yourself by helping others be successful. That means your coworkers, your boss, your customers, your suppliers, your partners, start getting into that mindset. And of course, work hard and with integrity. All right, so a little bit about what you'll learn. I'm not going to read each one of those things, but you, if you look at the chapters that we're going to cover, these are essentially the chapter headings. How will you learn it? Well, I'll provide, I want you to read. We'll do cover three chapters a week. So read the chapters each week. Um, read through also the PowerPoint presentations with the lecture notes, which are in the notes section of those PowerPoints. And you have to download those, in case I forget to tell you that, in order to see the notes. Um, and for doing your homework and, of course, studying. And there's one assignment in the class. Uh, well, it's, it's just a weekly homework assignment, but it's, it's a paper, short paper. Um, and then I'll study all the, again, study the recorded lectures. All right, so each week you're essentially going to do the same thing. There's five weeks, right? So each, each of the five weeks you have to read three chapters. As you read those chapters, take notes, write down any questions you have as you go. Read, then read through the slides and accompanying notes for each of those three chapters. Then complete the weekly homework assignment. There is one each of the five weeks. Then take the weekly test. There's a test that's due every week. So there's two act things you actually have to complete and turn in every single week, right? One is the homework assignment, which is due by Sunday night at the end of every week. And you have to have taken the exam for the week over the three chapters. 
which is also due by Sunday night at the end of each week. So we start this course on a Wednesday. So this coming Sunday, as in just a few days from now, you have to do the week one homework and have taken the exam for week one, okay? So every week, each of the five weeks, you have to essentially do those, those things, all right? So don't get behind. You need to make up your mind that you need to spend probably two to three hours per night every day for the five weeks in order to knock out an entire semester in five weeks, two to three hours a day. So make up your mind right now that that's the amount of time that you're gonna devote and actually schedule that time, all right? All right, so let's, we're gonna talk a little bit about Brightspace, uh, about MindTap. MindTap is just the digital version of your book and some of the other things that come with it. Uh, and, we'll, and we'll run through the syllabus. All right, so bear with me. Let's take a look at Brightspace. All right, so this is what you see when you log into the course. Principles of management. All right, see the announcements are there. And by the way, when you don't want to see them anymore, after you've read them or whatever, you can click there and get rid of them. All right. Um, you can always see my contact information. It's on the home screen. There's my email address. There's my phone number. By the way, I'm not in my office, so you have to leave me a voicemail and with your uh, phone number and I'll call you back. Um, that's my office. Again, I won't be there this, this summer. Um, the course schedule is in the syllabus. But if you just want to see what you have to do for the week, you can click on that. If you want to see the syllabus, just click on that. And that'll kind of, really, that'll give you almost everything you need to know. All right, so how do you navigate in here? All right, so everything you need to, need to really do is in content. So you click on content. And then as you might imagine, start here is where you're at now, all right? So you're watching the video and start here. So this is week one. So what do you need to do every week? One of the things I told you need to do is read each of the three chapters that is assigned for that week. This particular week for week one, you see chapter one, two, and three, all right? So read chapters one, two, and three in your book. It doesn't matter if you have the, the paper copy or the digital copy, either one, right? Read those three chapters. Take good notes as you go. Then click on these slides. Now, when you click on these, you'll notice that you can look at the PowerPoints on your computer. So you could click through each of the slides this way if you like. Now, that's fine, but you won't be able to see my lecture notes. The only way you get those is if you download the slide deck, okay? So if you download one of the slide decks, what you're gonna see is the PowerPoints. You can put it in, in the notes view, which you do here. Oops. All right, so you can see my notes for that slide. Click to the next slide, you can see my notes, and on and on and on, okay? So, that's how you see my lectures. Those are literally the lecture notes that I use for my face-to-face -face classes. So you are essentially getting my lectures, but in a written form. In fact, maybe even better because you're getting the notes essentially already written down for you, ready to study, okay? All right, so let's go back to content. So back to week one. So, you, you read each of the three chapters for the week, then go through the, the lectures, the lecture PowerPoints, and look at my notes. Might help just add a few things. I mean, essentially all the questions on the, on the weekly exams are from the textbook chapters. 
Um, but I do add a few things um, in my notes and the PowerPoint slides will help you kind of visualize some of the things in the chapters. It's just one more way to learn. So you're gonna learn on your own by reading, then you're gonna learn the same information again by going through the PowerPoint slides and looking at my notes, okay? Once you've done that, then click on the homework assignment. All right, so for week one, what is your homework assignment? For this week, homework, complete the following self-assessment self and tally your results, okay? So if you click on this, you'll be able to download this document, which is a, a short self-assessment, right? And then score it. There's directions on how to score it. And then it says, click on the discussions tab and respond to the week one homework form with all of the following. Okay, so, all right. So I, I'm asking you to essentially go to the week one discussion forum and start a thread introducing yourself, telling me who you are, where you're from, what's your major, uh, what type of degree you're pursuing, what you like to do for a living after graduation, maybe give me a hobby, and what shows you're currently binging on Hulu or Netflix. Um, then start a second thread and summarize your self-assessment results and tell me whether your you agree with the results or not uh, and how what you've learned from the exercise might help you in your job or future career. And then lastly, yeah, comment on, read some of your other uh, classmates' uh, posts and comment on at least one of them. So I'll be looking for three posts from you, all written, by the way, in complete sentences. I'm looking for complete thoughts. If you do that, and you write in complete sentences using proper English grammar, spelling, punctuation, you'll get the full 25 points for this week's homework, okay? All right, so what does that look like? Well, there you go, discussions. Click on discussions, it's not actually open right now because it, they don't open until tomorrow, Wednesday. But you'll be able to see the what I just went over with you, right? Go to the discussions, all right? So for week two, that's your, your homework for week one. Next week, you can see week two is the same very much. Now week three, you actually have a paper to write. So you won't see one for, for week three. What will you see in its place in week three, you ask? Well, click on week three. All right, so you're going to read chapters 8, 9, and 10 for week three. And then instead of doing a discussion forum or discussion board for this week's homework, instead you're going to interview a manager and write a two to three page essay based on it. Then you're going to turn in your essay in the assignments tab. All right. Well, where are the instructions? What do you mean management interview essay? Well, there they are right there. Click on management interview essay and you'll actually be able to see, see that downloads when you do that. So if you click on management interview essay, there, here's, here's the assignment. So write a two to three page essay based on your interview of a manager or executive in a field or industry you're interested in working in after graduation. Uh, they must work at a legitimate business, by the way. So you need to start picking, a, finding a person to interview starting week one. Don't wait until the beginning of week three and then go, huh, what's my homework? Oh crap, I gotta find a, a manager of some kind somewhere to interview for, to write an essay on? Oh crap, okay, so don't, don't panic. Just start finding someone now. Uh, if you don't know somebody that's a manager at a legitimate business, well, you can just go to a local business and ask if you can man if you can interview someone. Tell them you're doing a school project. Take about 15 minutes to interview someone to write a paper on. All right. So there, this is an essay. All right. Do not simply copy the questions and then write their responses put it on a piece of paper and turn it in. That's not an essay, right? 
All right, so I explained to you, I give you some information about what makes your paper an essay. That means it includes your thoughts, opinions, and commentary as appropriate throughout your paper. So looking for a cover sheet, oops. So your paper is gonna have a, cover, a one page cover sheet and have that information on it, right? And then it's gonna have two to three pages of content after that cover sheet, right? So have an intro paragraph, tell me who you're interviewing, job title, et cetera, all this information. Then the body will be paragraphs, which include the questions and, and the interviewee responses and any commentary from you. Um, and remember, by the way, writing wise, paragraphs should normally have no more than four or five sentences. So no entire page paragraphs, okay? Four, four or five sentences per paragraph, right? And then uh, a summary paragraph at the end, tell me, telling me what you've learned from doing this assignment and how you might use this information in your current job or future job, okay? And here are the questions. Now, you don't necessarily have to ask all 10 of these questions, and you may ask additional questions if you choose. But this is kind of basically what I'm looking, kind of information I'm looking for. So feel free to just ask these 10 questions um, and then write all this up in the form of an essay, okay? Two or three pages plus a cover sheet. All right. Um, Let's go back to Brightspace for a second. Close that. Sorry, I'm actually at my right arm is in a sling. I just had surgery and I'm trying to do this kind of through the sling. So bear with me. All right. So essentially you're doing that, those things for each week. We know that this is week one. There's all the stuff you have to do for week one. Starting on Monday of next week, you can see all the things you got to do for week two, week three, week four, and week five. Too easy, right? Obviously, at the end of each week, if you look below the homework, you can see that you have an exam. To take the exam, simply click here. Too easy, right? And that starts the exam. Understand that the exams, they're, they're multiple choice. Um, all of them have 50 questions. We're two points each. You have 75 minutes to complete the exam. And understand, once you start an exam, you can't pause it or stop it and then restart it, okay? And you only get one shot at it. So make sure you are ready to go before you attempt an exam, okay? Now, obviously, you're, this is, you're taking this online, right? You're, you're at home on your own. So it's obviously, it is open book. Please, 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 please trust me when I tell you, you do not have enough time to look up the answers to 50 questions. Not even close. You're, you really, really, really need to study as if this is a closed book exam or you will run out of time and you will fail the test. This is typically what happens every semester. Uh, even my face-to-face -face classes, I allow my students to use its open book. They can take the test. On, they take the test on their own. Typically, what happens is every semester, about a third of the class gets an F on the first exam. Why? Because they don't believe me when I tell them that they have to study and prepare for the exam as if it is a closed book exam before they take the test. They don't believe me. They think, oh, no, it's open book. I can just look up every answer to every question. No sweat. Or I'll just kind of sort of skim each chapter and then I'll take the test. No problem. You'll fail. Trust me. You need to have a really good understanding of all three chapters for each of the weekly exams before you take the test, right? Now, hey, be smart about it, right? Obviously, read all three chapters at least once, maybe twice. Read through all the PowerPoints with my notes. Definitely do that. Right before you take the test, definitely at least reread the chapter summaries. 
that are at the end of every chapter? Definitely do that. But also, hey, be smart, right? Maybe make yourself a little cheat sheet with the page number that every one of the key terms is, is on, right? So you can look something up really quick if you need to. Um, and by the way, not all the questions are on key terms, right? Sometimes they're over key concepts. So maybe make yourself a little index uh, of key, key terms. You know, this term is on page 15. This term is on page 16. This uh, topic is on this, this page. This topic is on that page. I mean, that's what I would do. I probably shouldn't tell you that, but I'm trying to help you out, all right? Because I think you will learn by going through this process anyway. So I would do that. So remember, for every single week, one more time, what you do, read the three chapters that, that are assigned for that week, do the homework, there are the instructions, and then take the weekly exam, right? You do that each of the five weeks. Now, you're like, oh, well, hang on, what's this? Finals week. Oh, crap. You have to take a cumulative final? Well, yes and no. You can. It is an optional comprehensive exam to be taken during finals week. All right. Well, when is finals week? Well, you can see here that it starts August 12th and it closes the next day. So you have still have 75 minutes to take the test, but you start it anytime you want. Okay. As long as it, you start it sometime on the 12th before and, you know, complete it before the 13th at 11.59 p.m. You don't have to take it. So what I would do is go to the grade book after your fifth weekly exam. Look at your grade. If you're really close to getting the next higher grade, then I would definitely go ahead and attempt the comprehensive final exam. And by the way, what I will do for you, I will add a document here that will tell you the topic of all 50 questions that are gonna be on this exam. Essentially giving you a cheat sheet for every single question on the exam. So essentially you're getting three or four questions for each of the 15 chapters that we're covering during this course. So you decide whether, you know, like, I mean, it counts whether, you know, you do well on it or you don't do well at it. So, you know, be sure you want to take it. If, you, if you've got an 80 in the class after week five, yeah, you, you're, there's no way you're going to raise your, your score all the way to an A. And, in fact, if you bomb it, there's a chance you could blow your B and get a C. So don't take it. But if you have an 88 or an 89, you probably wanna go ahead and study for this final exam using the review that I'm going to post here. Um, and really study hard, do well. Hey, get that next higher grade, all right? Um, okay, a little bit of, what else here? Digital textbook. Um, once you, if you get the digital version of the textbook, um, you can actually access it here. And that actually opens up a new window with a digital version of your textbook. Nothing in here is mandatory. It's just great stuff. Like here you can see chapter one. You can actually read chapter one by clicking there. See what that looks like. And you can page through, you know each page. Pretty cool. Um, what else? Also, don't worry about the assignments. There are practice things in here that you might want to take a look at. Um, like you can make yourself flashcards for each chapter. You can take a practice test. If you want to see what the tests look like on the actual exams, you can actually see what the tests look like, what the test questions look like. Okay. 
So that's pretty cool. Um, just to get a feel for it. And there are all multiple choice. And there might be a few true false just because your professor cares about you. Um, what else? Let's see here. Oh, for that, that assignment in week three. With one assignment. Where do you turn in that assignment, you say? Well, go to the, uh, go to the ass assignments. Hang on. Go to the assignments tab. And it's, that's where you're going to turn it in. Let's see here. That's week three. All right. So you're going to drag and drop your... If you have any problems... Uh, turning in your assignment um, I'll give you I'll give you some more information you know if, if you have any trouble just don't don't sweat it you can email it to me it's not a big problem okay but make sure you turn it in on time it's by Sunday night at 11:59 when everything is due okay all right very quickly let's take a look at syllabus so that's essentially how to navigate Brightspace, that's what you have to do every week. You're starting in week one. So read, let's see, what chapters are we covering in week one? Chapters one, two, and three, it looks like. Okay, then go through the slides here, here, and here. And look at my notes. Download those so you can see my notes. Do the homework assignment. And take the exam. All right, that's what you do each of the five weeks of this course. Too easy. All right, very quickly, let's go through the syllabus. All right, now I already covered a lot of this stuff, but so we'll go, this will go pretty quick. All right, so course description, you can see, read all that for yourself. My contact information again, which is also in Brightspace. Textbook, you can see which textbook to get. And again, I, I don't care if you get the digital version or the paper version, whichever you want. Um, if you get a brand new textbook, a brand new one, it comes with the digital code that you can use to access the textbook online, uh, the digital version. So that way you get both. It's up to you. Um, all right. This is an online course. So my lectures are written as notes in the PowerPoint slides. I went over that. Please make sure you read all of the chapters and go through all the slides and study before you take the exam. Please believe me when I tell you, you need to do that. You, can't, you don't have time. 50 questions, 75 minutes, 75 minutes, you don't have time to look everything up, all right? So your goal should be to, to be able to answer at least, you know, 80% or more of the questions just right away. Bam, I got that. Bam, I got that one. And just have a few that you might need to look up. All right. Um, we went over that information, some of that information. One of the things that I didn't mention is the difference between what a manager and a leader is. Those are two different kind of parts of being in charge. And we'll learn about those throughout the course. And you'll learn that there is a time and a place for all leaders and all managers to be, to fill both of those roles. So we'll talk about that a little bit more. All right, um, I want you to practice your critical thinking skills and your professional writing skills. All of your homework and the paper heavily, heavily graded on writing. That is proper English, proper grammar, proper punctuation, proper spelling, readability. Make sure your papers are written and your posts are writ well written because I do take off points for not writing professionally. Okay? Make sure you do that. And I give you some information in the syllabus about where you can get help with your writing. And obviously, you got to learn the objective content of each of the chapters you're assigned. All right. And very easily, you can see in this handy dandy course schedule, what is due each week, right? So this course starts the week of July 10th, which is Wednesday, July 10th. By this coming Sunday, just a few days from now, you have to turn in your homework assignment for the week and take exam one. 
starting on Monday, July 15th. Do the same thing for chapters four through six. Read chapters four through six. Go through the slides for four through six. Do your homework for four through six. And then take the weekly exam for chapters four through six. Week three, instead of doing a discussion board for homework, you got to turn in a manager interview essay. And then of course, take exam three. Now notice, I skip a couple of chapters in the course. So do one, one, two, three here, four, five, six, the second week, the third week, you skip, you skip one chapter. This week is over eight, nine, and 10. Next week, same thing, 12, 13, 14. And then the last week, the week of October, uh, August 5th, uh, it's over chapters 15, 16, and 18, right? So again, Every week by Sunday evening. Sunday is considered the end of each work, uh, school week for this course, right? So, we're starting this course on July 10th, which is a Wednesday. But by Sunday, this coming Sunday, make sure. You turn in your homework assignment, you take the first exam. By the next Sunday, make sure you do your homework for week two. Turn it in and... Uh, take exam two. All right, et cetera, et cetera. All right, so those weekly exams, there's five of them, they're worth 100 points each. Too easy. Your homework, there's four of those, four homework the discussion boards, there's four of those. They're worth 25 points each for a total of 100 points. The week three homework, remember that's a paper, a two to three page paper, that's worth 100 points. So if you take the optional comprehensive exam, you got a total of 800 possible points. So you can, you can see if, if you do take the final, you can see how many points you need to make each grade. If you decide not to take the cumulative final, then you can see that you need this many points for each grade, okay? So you don't ever need to email me or call me asking you, asking me uh, what your grade is in the class. Ooh, look in the grade book, <laughs> average your grades. You can see what your grades are, right? You can see how many points you need for each grade, right? Um, you can decide after, again, after that fifth weekly exam, you can decide if you want to take the, the comprehensive exam, comprehensive exam. Now, that's up to you, okay? So read through that. Again, after your fifth exam, that's when you should probably decide if you want to take the comprehensive final or not. And I'm going to give you a great review. I'm going to tell you the topic of every single one of the 50 questions on that comprehensive final. So you can make yourself a cheat sheet and read up on each of those things as you study. Uh, you'll probably do really well on that. It'll probably be your highest grade in the whole, the whole course. Um, but you decide, okay? By the way, I don't give you your grade. You give you your grade. So if you want to make an A, earn an A. Don't email me at the end, towards the end of the semester when you have an 80... 89.3 and say, is there any way I could get bumped up to, no, there's, there's not, not unless you can invent a time machine, come back to the beginning of the course and study harder, okay? You give you your grade, I don't give you your grade, okay? And I do that for everybody, so, all right, so again, weekly exams, they're with 100 points each, they're due by every, every Sunday night, by 11.59 p.m., at the end of every week, you have one that is due. Don't wait until Sunday night at 11 o'clock to start your exam. Because if you have a problem, you lose your internet connection, or whatever the case may be, you won't be able to finish the exam, right? If you wait until, I'm not gonna return emails at 11.30 on Sunday nights. I'm not gonna reset the exam for anybody at 11.30 on Sunday night. So. I suggest you take that exam at least Sunday afternoon, right? 
in case you have a problem, you can contact me and I can fix it. But don't wait until the last minute, all right? Um, what else? Multiple choice test questions, mostly. If you true, false, just goods. I care. What else? Um, you can take the exams early. Heck, you can take the exams on Mondays if you want. Tuesdays or Wednesday or Thursday or Friday of each week. It doesn't matter. You can take, they're open. In fact, they're all open right now. Just understand, you only get one shot at each one. You can take them early, but you cannot take them late. You can't take them late. So if week one, the week one test is due by the end of week one at 11.59 p.m. on Sunday night, you cannot open that exam and take it on Monday. It won't open for you. So don't email me and say, oh, I forgot, or I was busy, or my dog died, I got in a fight with my girlfriend, uh, life is hard, I'm sorry, uh, but the answer will be no. So. I do not allow people to take tests late or turn in assignments late. Okay, so plan accordingly your homework. Also, you can do it early, but you can't do it late. You won't be able to get into, for example, the weekly discussion boards. They close every Sunday night at 11.59 p.m. Um, and by the way, I can tell when you do your posts. So if you do a really haphazard post at 11.30, 45 on Sunday night. Um, yeah, I'm going to know that you did it at the last second and that's why your posts stink and you're not going to get anywhere near full points. Okay. So you can do your, you can do that work early. So don't wait till the very last second to do the exam or your homework. Okay. The third week, instead of an online discussion, again, you have to do a management interview essay. So you're gonna interview a manager, which you're gonna start looking for when? Starting now, first week, right? Find a friend that's a manager at some restaurant or store or company or a friend of a friend or a family member or somebody has got a friend who is a manager or an executive at a legitimate business. No Amway, no he mows lawns and works out of his garage, Ah, none of that, all right? It's got to be a legitimate business, and by legitimate business, I'm not trying to insult anybody, but I have to make sure you're not making things up. So, this is what it requires. That legitimate business must either have a website or a physical address and a phone number. That information needs to be on your cover sheet, which is in the uh, assignment instructions, all right? So, um, no uh, rinky-dink businesses, a real business, okay? All right. Um, again, the writing is how I will grade, mostly grade that two to three page paper. So you got a cover sheet and then two to three pages of content. Make sure you have somebody check your writing for you. Correct it, proof it, edit, edit it. Because that's mostly how I'm gonna take off, where I'm gonna take off points. Again, every semester during the face-to-face, -face, a lot of time uh, classes, I give two assign written assignments. I would say 20% 20, 20 of the class usually gets an F. Because if, if I go through the first page or half of the first page and it's just full of writing errors, grammatical errors, spelling errors, I stop reading. I'm not going to waste my You're trying to waste my time. I'm not going to allow it. So I stop reading and I give you an F. And I move on to the next paper. So... I, I cannot stress, students don't believe me that I'll do that, I will, all right? All you gotta do, get your paper check, checked by somebody who knows what the heck they're doing. By the way, if you go to the, uh, uh, your home page of Brightspace, here I'll show you. The home page, not the course home page, that's the course home page. Go to the Brightspace home page, click the little picture there. Then if you click on smart thinking, then they're open. You can actually you can actually 
uh, submit your writing to a writing expert in the in the student success center here and they'll help you with your paper now they're not going to do it instantly so if you wait until the last second to do your assignment yeah it's like a two-day turnaround so plan accordingly right so maybe be working on your paper before the third week even starts that way once you finish writing it you've got two to three pages of content plus a cover page right you can email your paper uh, using that that link and have somebody look at it maybe it takes two days for them to get it back to you they get it back to you and they're like hey I'd fix this 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 and this fix all that stuff then turn it in right all right um, and then this covers the comprehensive final which I think I already covered with you right so make sure you read through all that information um, again I do not accept late work um, and believe me as a professor been doing this a while I've heard every single excuse known to man um, I didn't feel well I had a really bad headache uh, I had a work issue I overslept I didn't feel good my dog died I got an argue with my roommate oh traffic was terrible oh my computer took a dump my favorite Netflix show was canceled. I actually got that one. Um, these are not extreme circumstances. I'm not going to reopen an exam for you to take it late for any of that. Now, if you were in the hospital like the entire week before something was due and you can give me verifiable proof, documented proof, um, which I will confirm and verify, if you can do that, then yes. I will. I absolutely will reopen an assignment so you can turn in your assignment late, a day late, or so, or allow you to take a test a day late. But only if you had a death in the immediate family, or you've been in the hospital for like a week. Okay. So just make up your mind. You're not going to turn in your your work late. You're going to do things on time, like a professional. Part of being a professional is getting your work done on time. All right. Um, and by the way, stuff does come up. I get that. So don't wait until the last minute. Because that way, if something does come up, you can still get your work turned in on time. All right? All right. Now, attendance. I have to take attendance in some way, even though this is an online course. You might think, what? No, I do this whenever I want. Yeah, you do. But I still have to take a, a, attendance somehow. So here's how I do it. What I do is I count your weekly homework assignment as 10% of your attendance and your weekly exam, each weekly exam, as 10%. And just kind of do it that way. Um, now, keep in mind, per MCC attendance policy, you can't miss more than 25% of any course. So that means that you could not do either two work, uh, homework assignments, or you could miss one exam and one homework assignment or whatever, but no more, right? Because if each one is worth 10%, hey, the third one would put you at 30% absent. So I'd have to drop you from the course, okay? That's how that works. So do your work every week and I'll count you present in the attendance. Um, so W's versus F's. All right. So if you'd like, if you want to drop the course, you have to do so before July 31st. You can drop the course before July 31st and get a W. Right. Um, now, if you go above the 25% absent rate before July 31st, I'll drop you. You don't have a choice. I will drop you and you get a W. But... After July 31st, you are not allowed to drop the course. That means if you're still enrolled in the class after July 31st, you get whatever grade you earn. And by the way, I will, if you've already missed more than 25% of the course, you'll just get a zero. If you're still enrolled after July 31st, I'll just, I have to give you a zero 
for the remaining things. In other words, I will lock you out of the remaining uh, exams and assignments uh, if you're already over the 30%, okay? Or the 25%. So keep that in mind. Uh, just be respectful in your communication with me and I will do the same with you. Um, not really going to have any healthy debate. You might get into some healthy debate of some kind on the in the forum web uh, discussion forums. Um, I don't expect anything super controversial, but just understand that college, in college you're supposed to be exposed to ideas and opinions that are different from yours. It doesn't mean that the other person is right necessarily. It doesn't mean that you can't even argue your point of view. But what it does mean is be professional. Don't make it personal. Okay. You can uh, express your point of view being respectful of others, even if they're not respectful of you, and you don't even have to get all mad about it. People do it all the time. It's called being a professional, okay? Um, pretty hard to cheat in this class unless you, uh, well, I guess you could if you really wanted to get creative. Um, don't cheat. Just do your own work, and you'll be fine. Take your test by yourself. Um, make sure that you're turning in a paper that is your own work. I do. We do use Turnitin, which checks papers for originality. So, don't turn in a paper that one of your buddies did last semester uh, for my class and think that you're going to get a really good grade because they got a good grade. No, the Turnitin will catch that. It'll go. Oh, hang, hang on. This paper has already been done, or a large percentage of it has already been done and turned in by another student. So right away, I would know that you plagiarized somebody else's work and you'd get an F for the paper, a zero, okay? All right, um, and then MCC policies, these are standard across uh, the college. So those are available for you. Um, academic integrity talks about cheating and the honor system. Um, the attendance policy, which I just kind of spelled out, which I follow. Um, accommodations, ADA. If you have accommodations, make sure you let me know. Um, you still have to do all your work, by the way, and just do it on time. Title IX information, it's all right there. Some contact information. And that's about it. All right, so once again, um, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to call my office, leave a voicemail, be happy to answer your questions, but try to find the answers first on your own. All right, that's all I have for you. Um, good luck in the course, and I look forward to connecting with you. I'll see you on the discussion boards.